Hi, welcome to Topic 3 Periodicity. This is the first lesson, 3.1, and these are the objectives that we're going to cover. Now there's a lot of memorization in this first lesson. It's fairly quick and hopefully it's a bit of revision. Atomic number Z and mass number is A. That was from Topic 2. Hopefully you remember that's the, pro the mass numbers, the protons plus the neutrons and the atomic number is just the protons. So you need to know that this is increasing in, a, in proton number as you go up. Also be aware of the first two are S and then the six here, six extra protons here. The electrons are in the P's, the middles are the D's and it starts at 3D and the bottom ones here are F's. So that's one way to double check or use that to do your electron configurations. Just some basics now. Groups are going down and periods are going across. You need to know these three here especially. Number one, alkali metals, which is also called group one metals, group one alkali metals. The 17, the halogens, the 18, the noble gases uh, and transition metals. But I would also be aware if you do a line that goes like this, like across, down, across, down, across, down, across, down, across, down, and, and then you go up and down from these horizontal lines. They're the semi-metals or the metalloids. Semi-metals and metalloids. I think I've seen one cruel question asking that you know what those are. That was in a recent paper actually. So I would extremely stress alkali metals, transition metals are here, halogens and noble gases. Now the lanthanide and the actinide series uh, that's not in your syllabus, so I don't think they'll ask you a question on that. Now, um, out of frustration, I have looked for years for a good periodic table that shows the shells. I don't know how long I spent, but I actually did this one myself. All right, uh, and the reason is because it's extremely important to understand why things gain or lose electrons. And you can see here, I've drawn out the shells, and what you can see is when they have a full shell, they are stable, so everyone wants to be like a noble gas. So you can see here that in all, the only thing that this fluorine has to do is gain one electron. I'll just put a big X in there. Uh, and here, gain one electron. And so what these two do is they all, they all gain an electron to come like this and they all become one minus charge. And here, you can see that they need two. So oxygen and sulfur, they all gain two electrons to become like a noble gas. So they all become two minus, they're ion charge. So they all become anions and they all gain electrons. Now you can see here from the other side, it's much easier just to lose this one electron to become like helium than it is to gain all of these electrons and steal them from everyone. You don't have a very positive nucleus, so that makes it really tough as well to get to neon and to become a 7 plus, highly unlikely. That's why all of these guys just lose that one electron on the outer shell and all of these group ones become uh, one plus. Now hydrogen is an exception. Uh, we're not really going to call that a metal or a non-metal. Actually when hydrogen loses that electron it only has a proton and so it technically isn't even an element. It doesn't have protons, neutrons and electrons. It's just a floating proton so it's a subatomic particle. That helps explain a little bit why it's an exception. All right, because it's a very little bit strange. And so here you can see again, let's just lose these two electrons to become like helium. That's a hell of a lot easier than trying to gain so many electrons and becoming positive. So magnesium, calcium, the same. They all become two plus. Now for the transition metals, they are, can be very random. So that's why we put them in brackets and they tell you what they are. You don't have to know those ones. So this is just a list. Hopefully you've done lots of experiments and you, you're aware or you can remember these things. Uh, we've just mentioned that the metals, the lose electrons. So let's just go back to that for a second. All of the ones on the left hand side are metals. So all of these over here are metals. And all of these over here are non-metals. So what you have here is the metals obviously lose electrons because of what we just talked about and the non-metals gain electrons again from what we just talked about. Other things that are of interest, metals are excellent conductors of heat and electricity because the electrons are free to roam in those metal bonds that we'll talk about in topic four. Malleable and bent into shapes ductile. These things are talked about in metallic bonds in topic four of why it's so. And same with the non-metals, they're in a lattice and so when you kind of knock on them, if you knock them a little bit, they suddenly start repelling each other rather than attracting, and so that's why they become very brittle. Their electrons are held tightly in bonds. That's why they can't uh, conduct heat and electricity very well. Okay, so uh, that will be covered again 
with more explanation in topic four. So here we have an example here of another just a nicer picture showing you where the metals and non-metals are. This is extremely important because the IB still, as, for, as well as electronegativity in topic four, it actually still accepts the, the reasoning that an ionic substance is a non-metal plus a metal, covalent substance is two non-metals. And that's sometimes, even though we get quite complicated in our assessment and analysis of bonds and stuff, this is actually still the best and easiest way to tell the difference.